from the very early days of becoming somewhat sentient, were taught to count. Ten fingers, two eyes, one nose. Five apples, half a glass of water, and a quarter of fuel left in the tank. We're taught to use these numbers to count quantities. Quantities of some singular concept. Quantities of one. A banana is one banana. Ten bananas is ten of one banana. Simple and intuitive. But that is not the world many people who deal with digital imagery are forced to live in. Whether you're a graphics designer or a 3D generalist or a photographer, you're absolutely aware of the hex color codes. Welcome to part 3 of the Nightmare series. While I went and got a degree in engineering, I was always interested in product design. The task in product design was often to make products that made perfect sense to people. Products that are easy to figure out without needing an instruction. Products that are human-oriented, intuitive, ergonomic. In engineering, we were mostly dealing with decimal number system, otherwise known as base 10. One banana, 10 bananas, 100 bananas. Easy to understand at a glance, easy to imagine, simply intuitive. But every time I launch any type of creative application, I'm met with this horribly unintuitive to everyone but programmers, hex or binary number system. You know what's the maximum value representable by an 8-digit binary number? That's right, 255. And you know what the hexadecimal representation of that number is? FF. Both of these you've already seen in your favorite digital editor, but probably never asked yourself why are you forced into using them. I'm talking about Octothorpe, FFFFFF, or 255, 255, 255, which is the maximum intensity achromatic. So yes, a whole banana in computer people terms is 255 out of 255 banana, or simply FF banana. Now, a quick test for you, dear viewer. At a glance, could you tell me what appearance does this hex or HTML code has? Don't look it up intuitively. No? How about this? There's some red, there's quite a bit of green, and a splash of blue. Yes, the color appears greenish. You can probably begin to see where I'm going with this. While I sort of understand the appeal of this 8-bit system for programming, I have no idea how it's still so prominent in the creative circles. Okay, I lied. I do have an idea why it's so prominent in the design circles. Number one, it's easy to copy and paste. Number two, no, there's no number two. That's it. That's the only reason. And now that we talked about all the upsides of hex color codes, let's talk about the downsides. Number one, it obfuscates the RGB values and makes it incredibly difficult to read at a glance intuitively. While can't read at a glance is not a deal breaker, it could save your butt once or twice. It pretends to be code. Many people, both within the design circle and outside of it, assume that this code holds more information than it actually does. People tend to assume that this hex color code is some sort of absolute color value that can be shared and reproduced identically on all the devices and mediums. This is false. Hex color codes are bound to color spaces just like any other RGB values are. 3. It promotes mindless usage. It promotes that copy and paste usage without even checking what the resulting output is. This ties into problems 1 and 2 but it's worth its own mention. 4. Hex color codes are not color profile independent, or somehow above or outside color management. Hex color codes should be assumed as sRGB, but also often they aren't. 00FF00 in Adobe RGB is miles different than 0FF00 in sRGB. Now it could end the video here leaving you all angry without proposing any improvement. But that does no good to you. It does no good to me either. After all, I use all the same graphics design software daily, and I want to see it improve. So where do we start? Let's start by decoding the cryptic values. Let's pick this green 00FF00 and let's bisect it in its R, G and B component. 00 is, well, 
0. FF is 255, which is the maximum 8-bit value. So that's 255 out of 255, which is 1. And again, 0, 0 is 0. Now we have three channels, A, G and B, which go as follows. 0, 1, 0. Much better. Now we can actually see that the result, given normal circumstances, is green. But I kind of want to make sure that this green matches the green I see on my sRGB display. Even when we viewed on a Mac, which are usually display P3 color space. So let us specify the color space of my values as well. That's it. That's my solution to the hex code problem. It's intuitive. It's easy to mix. Let's take halves for example. This is so much better than this. And it prompts a double check. Am I really in sRGB? Is my deliverable in sRGB? What the hell is sRGB? Funny enough, after I started complaining about the hex codes and started discussing ways how to fix them, someone has pointed me to an experimental CSS feature. By the time I finally managed to start making this video, the experimental feature has already been implemented. Now CSS allows you to specify the color space and the values you are feeding it. Here's an example. This is a maximum output of all three channels on a display P3 display. This is so incredibly close to what I had in mind. Also, notice how this new CSS feature pivoted away from the unintuitive 255 out of 255 format as well. Now we're making progress. But Studio, how are you going to copy and paste this value into Photoshop's, you might ask. Remember, software follows users. Uh, given the vendor cares about something more than just attracting new paying users by using trendy hashtag-like features. What I envision is having a similar input box just like we have now for the hex code. Select, copy, paste. Now at this point the software should be able to recognize what you're inputting. And it could even output suggestions and tips based on your input. This would effectively reduce the mindless copy-pasting, maybe Hopefully, prompt the user to make sure everything is in order. Sometimes all we need is a small nudge. A small nudge like, what the hell is Adobe RGB? And that will open a Pandora's box of beginning to scratch the surface of understanding computer color. So I strongly recommend you to push back on the hex codes and start demanding more information. Start discussions on how to improve on it. Let's develop something that is easy to understand, intuitive, for both pro users and newbies. Let's get rid of this ancient cryptic language, and let's continue on our goal to improve digital color and digital color management altogether. Thank you for listening to my nonsense today, I hope to see you next time. Bye.